Hi, welcome to your tutorials point. In this video series, we are going to begin with a concept which is very important for anyone who wants to get start with the web designing. Here, we are going to start with HTML5. You might have heard about HTML which stands for Hypertext Markup Language. HTML means the same even here. But when I say 5, that means it is bringing you some new features which were not available in the initial releases of HTML. So that means when we are starting with HTML5, you should have a basic idea about the HTML5, HTML, CSS and JavaScript. When I say about HTML, because obviously we are learning HTML5, so you must know about the previous syntaxes and the tags of HTML. CSS and JavaScript will give you an added advantage because while implementing the new features of HTML5, you will come across in situation where we are implementing JavaScript because the previous releases of HTML were not supporting those features. So here, using JavaScript, the HTML5 is going to provide you a lot of new features which we are going to discuss a bit later. Along with that, as you know, while implementing HTML also, you should have a text editor and web browser. So even here, you should have the latest version of any web browser. Along with that, you should have a text editor. If you are not familiar about any of these technologies, we do have the text tutorials as well as the video tutorials in Tutorials Point website. You can simply go there and refer to them. Once you are done, you are very good to start with HTML5. Now, let's see what are the new features which are now available with the HTML5 and along with that we'll see what are the additional features out here. So let's see, uh, it's published in October 2014 from World Wide Web Consortium, also stands for W3C, alright. So it is not created by any individual, rather it is created by World Wide Web Consortium in for October 2014. So comparatively to HTML, it is a quite latest technology. It is the latest and the most enhanced version of HTML, as I already told. It not only supersedes the HTML4 version, but it also supersedes the XHTML versions like 1.0 and 1.1. It's a standard way for structuring your document object model, all right? It's structuring and presenting the content on the World Wide Web. So basically when you put anything out on the World Wide Web, it's in a form of website which is a collection of uh, web pages. So here you can structure your web pages using HTML5 in a far better way than the previous releases of HTML. And it also ensures backward compatibility. Means if you are getting started with the latest version that is HTML5, that doesn't mean that you are not able to put the previous tags uh, like h1, h2, paragraph tag, bold italic. You can use all the tags of the previous releases of HTML. Along with that, it is going to give you some new semantics which you can use anytime while working with the HTML5. So let's see what are the additional features which we are getting in this particular version of HTML. That is new semantics. As I just said that it's going to provide you the, some of the new collection of tags which will help you out in creating your DOM. Canvas which will help you in rendering the shapes and drawings at the runtime over the web page. Geolocation means where you are going to trap the uh, particular location, the geographic location of any client which is making the request and accordingly you can give them the service as per their location. Microdata, microdata simply means when you are taking out the metadata within the tags of HTML, right? Means when you are working with the body and you want to give some additional detail for some particular text out there, you can use microdata. Web storage, where it is going to the feature of putting the messaging thing in the, uh, not the messaging, sorry, it's giving you the storage facility in your World Wide Web. Web messaging will give you the feature of sending the messages through the networks using the HTML5. IndexedDB, IndexedDB is an additional way to store the data, like here you can see web storage, 
but it is for the small details only. If you have some large details and you want to store them in the browser, you can use the index DB, which where you want to retrieve the data in a frequent way. Multimedia. Multimedia is basically something where you want to put the audio or video file over the web browser. So it's going to use some more semantics for putting them on the browser. Obviously, you should have the uh, compatible plugins for that in order to execute those audio or video files. So these are the new features which we are going to cover in these video series throughout. So one by one, we will start working with them. So this is about the introduction. In our next video, we will start putting some practical imp implementation as well. Tutorialspoint.com. Simply easy learning.